in a moment can you open your mouth and surrender to his lordship surrender the wisdom before time we surrender We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the robust manifestation of your glory in our midst. As you swallow up our fears, our confusions, our concerns, and you plant in us such deep conviction to see us through the journey ahead of us, we give you praise. We exalt your name in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. You may be seated. What a journey in worship. Can we salute the psalmist, the psalmist of great grace and power? That the Lord has raised in our time a revivalist, catalyst personality. I want to take a snapshot before we minister to the sick and transmit uh, grace. I want to take a snapshot. A snapshot on the subject of spiritism. Because we are looking at levels, levels of contamination for which discernment must be built in the body of Christ. And we saw the possibilities that can find expression on the operating system of the flesh. Now we want to see spiritism proper. That's when someone is taking advantage of the abilities that are connected to a spirit that is not the Holy Spirit. And he's using it to masquerade, using it to deceive, using it to impersonate. Now, come with me to the book of um, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 11. I'll try as much as possible not to be carried away by the other activity taking place. It's a strange activity. Hallelujah. <laughs> Try as much as possible not to be involved. Now, if you have good news Bible, because this scripture is very technical, quite complicated, and if you are reading from Old King James, as my custom is, you are not likely to understand the meaning of that scripture. So I'm going to be reading from a good news Bible. Isaiah chapter 8, beginning from verse 11. Just stay with me, okay? Good news Bible. You can put down the reference so that you can check it out when you get back home, just in case you do not have access to it on your tab or on your iPad. With his great power, the Lord warned me not to follow the road which the people were following. Good news Bible. Verse 11, verse 12 now. Do not join in the schemes of the people and do not be afraid of the things that they fear. So part of what propelled these people, propelled these guys to come into alliance with spirits, spirits of darkness, was because of a certain kind of fear that invaded their time. He said, do not be afraid of their fear and do not what? Follow the road which people, which these people were following. All right, verse 13. Remember that I, the Lord Almighty, am holy, and I'm the one that you must fear. 
because my awesome, because of my awesome holiness, I am like a stone that the people stumble over. I am like a trap which will catch the people of the kingdoms of Judah and Israel, the people of Jerusalem. Many will stumble. They will fall and be crushed. They will be caught in a trap. You, my disciples, are to guard and preserve the messages that God has given me. The Lord has hidden himself from his people, but I trust him and place my hope in him. It seems to be a, a season that the presence and the mind of God was bleak. It was not intense. It was like the day of Samuel the prophet. Um, the King James, okay, let me get, oh, let me just stay with my good news. He said, here I am with the children whom the Lord has given me, the Lord Almighty whose throne is on Mount Zion has sent us as living messages to the people of Israel. I'm not going to explain that scripture. Living messages. Living messages to the people of Israel. But my people, verse 19, but my people will tell you to ask for messages from fortune tellers and mediums who ship and mutter. They will say, after all, people should ask for messages from the spirits and consult the dead on behalf of the living. Now, can we go to my traditional King James, please? I need to pick verse 19 from my King James. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits. So that's where I got the the team spiritism. So these guys are trying to access the realm of the supernatural using a guide that is a spirit of error. When they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. So we have three categories of uh, possible areas of consultation. The first one, the first category are people that have access to the dimensions that is held by familiar spirits. The second are wizards that have capacity to peep into the realm of the spirit. Are you there? You are not there. And then the third are such wizards that have the capacity to mutter. They speak by enchantment. They mutter things that have been propelled by the inspiration that is gotten from the frequency of the spirits they are in alignment with. So they mutter those things and interpret it. So those are three possible tributaries of darkness uh, that can give humankind access to the realm of the supernatural to satisfy um, the longing to fill the gap of ignorance in the mind of man. Part of the reasons why spiritism, part of the reasons why divination, part of the reasons why familiar spirits sell is because they um, operate in that department of darkness called divination. And divination holds uh, supernatural knowledge that comes from Satan. For instance, through divination, they can tell you the reason why a certain person died in the family. The, the selling point um, that the devil uses to get patronage, there are three selling points, three possible selling points. One of them is that he advertises a certain kind of knowledge that he holds in store. And that knowledge is held under the hand of the operation of divination. Divination is on three levels, and they are captured in this particular scripture. But we are going to take some time to build in an in-depth fashion so that we reveal there are multiple possibility of operations so that your heart will find the discernment 
that is needed for you to navigate through this life and identify the fingers of darkness every time it appears. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. All right. So, I need to take you on a little journey of definition of terminologies. Definition of terminologies. Let me use a support scripture so that you will find out that even in the Old Testament, the issue of spiritism was a great challenge that was uh, a stumbling block in the way of the genuine people that wanted to know God. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6 to 7, you can use my traditional King James version of the Bible. Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6 to 7. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits. This is God's position about an individual that is in the household of God and because of pressure decides to turn to familiar spirits. Meanwhile, I've not exhausted the reading that I invited you to read with me in the book of Isaiah chapter 8. We'll still go back. I want to pick a few points before we close that reading off. Are you there? Right, so the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among my people. Now, this is God's very bold position about people that come to church, people that have given their life to Christ but they still find it interesting to consult with spirits of error. What happens is that you turn yourself against God, you become God's enemy. Because when you seek from Satan those things that you should only seek from God, you make Satan your God. I will never forget that. It was Derek Prince that taught us that, that when you seek from Satan things that you should only seek from God, you make Satan your God. So Satan now has authority to begin to manipulate your life because you devoted your soul to seek help from Satan. Now, you have to be careful when you're under pressure. What you do with your pressure will determine who your God is. And so there are laws all across Scripture. In fact, during my study, I think I found uh, about 147 Scriptures where God spoke directly about spiritism and his disposition to spiritism. Yes, God is aware of the fact that you can access the spirit realm through other means other than the Holy Ghost. But if you do it, if you do it, you make yourself an enemy of God. And it is possible for you to do it unconsciously. And I'm going to show you why. How? Hallelujah. Okay, stay with me, stay with me. Let's go back to my scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 8. And when they shall say unto you, this is like an advertisement, that like we have another option available. Why are you wasting time? Some brethren went to pray in the bush. And when they were coming back, they saw one of the elders of their local assembly. He was consulting with the Ezemo of the territory. So they broke into the shrine and accosted him and brought him out. And I said, what's going on? The guy said, my picking God to the tea. God the tea. Now, may, <laughs> the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. What did he say? God the tea. And if you are listening to me from somewhere apart from Nigeria, and you don't understand what I mean by God the tea, it's our, we have our own kind of English. We speak in Nigeria. We invented it. And what that statement means is that the elder went to consult with the devil because he felt that God wastes time. God, God takes so much time to reach out to us. You see, that time that God, are you there? Allows you to go through without any sense of support whatsoever. That time proves your loyalty. It proves where your heart is. It proves whether you are a harlot or whether you are his bride. 
what you do with those moments are critical to God. It will show where your loyalty lies. So those are golden moments with which you can write your name in the heart of God with gold. When you decide to pitch your tent with God, come what may. Are you there? All right, so, so when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep, and that mortar should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead. Verse 20, which is the summary. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, if they are not, if their confession is not consistent with my word, it is because there is no light in them. So we have the outlet of possibilities that are tied to spiritism. And there are many functionaries of spiritism that have moved from the wilderness and now active practitioners on the stage of ministry. The effort that I intend to bring to you today is an effort that will educate you on the arms of spiritism. And if we have time, I'm going to show you their manifestations so that when you see those manifestations, you can well know that this is not the Spirit of God. And like I said to us, because we have picked it in the Spirit, that part of what is on God's mind right now in the global church is to uh, make a distinction between that which is demonic and that which is divine, that which is of the flesh and that which is of the Spirit, that which is error, and that which is truth. The great divide is supposed to be wider so that the separation will become clearer. And the possibility of mixture, where the profane and the holy, they are mingled together, they look alike, that kind of situation is what God wants to avoid. So that the sons of darkness will travel, it will be evident that they are on their highway towards meeting with Satan. And the sons of light will not accept Satan on their journey to walking with God. So part of what God is doing is bringing that distinction. And so for a moment of time, we will major on providing content along the lines of God's present revelation position in the spirit. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. All right, you will, ah, I don't have so much time to work on all these scriptures. But I just want to do the de definition of terminologies. Definition of terminologies. So first of all, I want to define magic. Magic. And under magic, we have a lot of sub-aspects, all right? So we'll pick it up, each sub-aspect, and we'll try to bring perspective to it and how it has migrated into church as one of the services that is available to the people that subscribe. And many people became involved in, with spiritism, not intentionally. They came in search of God, and we have a situation of people in post, imposters, of imposters trying to masquerade as genuine prophets of Christ and many gullible people have been trapped and they are guilty of what they did not commit. They came into strange atmospheres. The people were professing to be prophets of God. Meanwhile, they were functioning by spirits of error. So this effort is um, determined to heighten your discernment in the name of Jesus. So all right, so magic is looking to spirits and invincible forces to influence events and effect changes in material conditions or present an illusion of change. Magic is looking to spirits and invincible forces to influence events affect changes in the material conditions or present an illusion 
of change. So under the broad heading magic, we have five subheads. The first among the five, which is most interesting and most adaptable to Christian service is divination. And the Bible gives so much insight into divination, the marks of divination, the result of consulting with one that uses a familiar spirit to prefer the service that comes by divination are all enshrined in scriptures. So what exactly is divination and what are the modern operations of divination that is adaptable into church service and church deliveries? Are you still with me? So divination. The practice of determining the hidden significance of things or causes of events and sometimes foretelling the future. Coming from an analysis of the alignment of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Did you get that? Hallelujah. It means you're not following me. You're not following me. That's the meaning. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Let me try again. The practice of determining the hidden significance of things or causes of events and sometimes foretelling the future derivable from an analysis of the alignment of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Can we get, I, I think we need to get a scriptural reference for, I got that definition by interpreting a scripture. And the scripture is um, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. He said, Hear ye the word of the Lord spoken unto you, O house of Israel. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the hidden, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the hidden are dismayed at them. The signs of heaven, what he means by the signs of heaven, are the alignments of the sun, the alignments of the moon, and the alignments of the stars. Some of you that have stayed in cities like um, Kano, anyone here stayed in Kano long enough? Okay, so we have a few people here. Yeah, mommy, you stayed in Kano. Or you stayed in cities like um, Zaria, those are the strongest homes of astrology. You, you should know what I'm talking about. Then you find people that are paid sums of money and their duty is to ensure that they don't come out to see the sun. They are in hiding for like 17 years. Yes, for, for like 17 years until there is from one blue moon to another blue moon. Do you know what a blue moon is? Ah, then we have a problem. We have a problem because, okay, that's why we, call, that's why we attend fake churches, because there are basic things that you don't know. A blue moon is a season. I hope you know the, the moon appears once a month. The full moon appears once a month. Exactly. Now, the, the other day, we were invited to preach in Ethiopia. And um, they said it was, the meeting was going be, to be November. I did not know that the November of Ethiopia was different from our own November. Oh, my God. And we were ready to hop on a flight. And they say, <laughs> we don't know what, <laughs> this is not the time. Okay, well, let's not go into that. But we had a challenge because... Uh, the, the Ethiopians don't use our own time. They use 
what is like what um, their own calendar is different from our own calendar. Can you can you process that? All right. So now a blue moon is when the full moon appears twice in a month, and that is the beginning of a cycle that lasts for seventeen years. A, a real astrologer doesn't come out for those 17 years. So they, they use a horoscope to view how the moon is, the signs of heaven. And they can use that to predict a lot of things accurately, at least 70% accuracy in prediction. Because um, creation affords the possibility of cyclical representations. Something that happened before is likely to happen again. You are not with me? Yeah. All right, so there's a principle that is factored into creation, uh, and the principle is that it, these cyclical possibilities, that's how we get the oxygen cycle, we have the nitrogen cycle, and that was what the preacher of Ecclesiastes was trying to educate us about that there is vanity upon vanity. And the vanity he was talking about was an endless, vicious cycle that was repeating itself. On the strength of this vicious cycle, he makes comments like, that which has been is that which will be. Before you latch into, the, into prophecy, all right, they ask, you can predict the future from an understanding of the past. There are some things that reoccur. Are you there? For instance, if you are a smart woman, you should know how many days uh, forms your cycle. Because you had studied the science, you can make an arithmetic out of it. You can say, okay, in 28 days, I'm going to be in this condition because of the cyclical reality that supports so many things. On the strength of that, this astrologer that is locked up in a room and he doesn't see the sun, it is using the moon as his guiding light. And in those ancient cultures, the moon was used as the instrument that formed the calendar. And that's why we call it month, because it's derived from moon. You there with me? I don't want to go, let's leave it there. So, they believe that an adequate understanding of the alignments in the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, and the star, have their own um, signs that they are projecting about things that are about to come. And if you read the story of the birth of Jesus critically, you will find out that the guys that the Bible called wise men he didn't call them prophets. What he called them was what? Wise men. And the reason why they were called wise men and not prophets is because they had access to a kind of knowledge that was not common among men. And that kind of knowledge was astrology. You will see that what compelled their journey was the star that they beheld in the east. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star. Not that the Holy Ghost has spoken to us. What did they see? And they were aware of the fact that this star was a sign of a king. They were astrologers and they were able to interpret the omen that was captured in that star. Oh my God, you're not, you not following me. You're not following me. So you, you, uh, Jeremiah now comes with an instruction and the instruction is that we should not be dismayed by the signs of heaven. He was speaking about astrology because astrology is one of the arms of divination as you will come to see very soon. So we are still talking about magic. And in magic, we are using spiritual advantages drawn from spirits drawn from the understanding that spirits have to manipulate this physical world. You must understand that the Bible says that they that do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries. 
but the people that do know their God. The Bible didn't say the people that do know Jehovah. It said the people that do know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploit. So if the God they know is shown go and they know him well, they are going to be strong and they will have the capacity to do exploits. If the God that they know is a siren in the Atlantic Ocean and they know that siren very well, it means that they will be strong and they will do exploits. So if you read your Bible and go to the end of the Bible, the Bible says the same way that Janice and Jambres withstood Moses. That's how the truth is going to be withstood in the last days. Yes, the, the, the battle for truth will be fought in the supernatural. It's only the strong can fight in that time. So it will be a great disservice to the body of Christ for us not to educate people about the Holy Spirit, how about to walk, how to walk with him, and also to educate people about what is obtainable on the other side, and the kind of warfare that will determine uh, our possibilities in the days to come. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Okay, so I, I believe you are following me. So in divination, so basically in magic, we are using the advantages that can be drawn from the potential that spirits carry, and we are using it to superimpose upon the natural realm. The natural realm is, is a victim. The reason why the natural realm is a victim is because if, we, if I take you to the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, and maybe we read it directly from the Hebrew Bible, it has a different meaning from what you will find in the English Bible. Part of what we'll find if we read Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 is the engineering style that God used to construct the invincible and the visible realm. If we go fully into that ling linguistic investigation, some of you will slip off because you are not used to, pro to, to researching into scriptures that way. You just sleep. You just, oh my God, what's this man doing? So that's the, I'm going to spare you all the details. But there is a word there that you should never, never overlook. Are you there? That's Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. It said, these are the generations. That word generation is used in that scripture. If it were purely English language that we're dealing with, it would be wrong for the word generations to be in that scripture. Because this is an account of creation. Are you there with me? So God is just pioneering a reality. And then the use of the word generations then comes into that context. It looks like it's not applicable in very traditional English language. But you see, and that's why we need to understand that it is very difficult translating the original words that are captured in that scripture into English language because Hebrew language is deeper than English language. So a lot of meanings are likely to be lost in transit if you want to do the translation. So many times we will need to go uh, conduct linguistic investigations in order to recover meanings and recover truth. This is the first point in your Bible where you will need linguistic investigation. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. And you will not need it for everything there. You will need it for the word generations. And if you click on that in your electronic Bible, it should read totally down. That's an idea of the way God created the physical world and the spiritual world. The, the word tolidal means to give birth to. And the word tolidal is comparative. You must find out what is being compared and contrasted anytime that word is used. If you look critically, you will see what is being compared and contrasted is heaven and earth. It's invincible and visible. And the sequence in which it is written must also be understood. The invincible first, the heavens first, before the earth. The reason why that word is used, literally, what it means is that the visible realm was given back to from the invincible. And that's why if you want to bring about any reasonable change, on the visible, you must begin from the invincible. Because that's the mother, that's the foundational platform from whence the visible dimension derives. 
Oh, someone is not here. I say you are not here. All right, so if the Bible is saying the people that do know their God, they shall be strong, it means that if you know a spirit being and you know that being well and that being is your God, that you will be able to display things that are super normal to normal human beings that have no access to the spirit realm whatsoever. And that is an ancient discovery. It's an ancient discovery. It has nothing to do with our age and time. And so in order for people to have advantage, they normally seek this advantage through spirits. And so you can understand what happened in the book of um, Isaiah chapter 8, where verse 19, where people were asking, can't we seek familiar spirits? Because they are trying to look for advantage. Can't we seek wizards that peep, wizards that mutter? But the Bible says, should not a people seek unto their own God? Should not we follow the ways of our God? Should not we wait for our God to respond to us? We do not have options. We wait on our God until he shows up and decides to empower us with strategic insight. We will receive insight from no other spirit being. That's the meaning of devotion. That's the meaning of loyalty. It's not as if options do not exist, but we are Christians because we choose Jesus, we choose the Holy Spirit as the entry point and the vista through which we view the spirit realm. There are many other possibilities of how to view and take advantage of the spirit realm. There are many other dimensions of spiritual education that support the possibilities that come from spirits of error. But we have decided to sign up with the Holy Ghost and it is only through the access that the Holy Spirit gives us that we view the spirit realm. Now, you see, oh my God, are you still with me here? That's what it means to be holy. We are separated to the spirit of God. We do not have other options that we can explore. We are yielded to the spirit of God. And it is through our vessel that the Holy Ghost can be known. Because since we are yielded only to the Spirit of God, our lives become a platform through which the Holy Spirit can manifest his displays. And like Daniel, you can see that Daniel was separated to the Holy Ghost and there were necromancers there, there were Chaldeans there, there were magicians there in Babylon. There were people that had access to the spirit realm through other sources as it is revealed in the book of Daniel. But one of the things that you'll find in the book of Daniel was the superior possibilities that were available to Daniel that even the sorcerers could not lie about. The king Hange had a dream, forgot his dream, but still remembered that he, he dreamt. And then they called all the sorcerers, the magicians, and the Chaldeans and said, all right, you guys show up. I had a dream, but I've forgotten it. That was where we saw the outright limitation of the other spirits of error that were consulted. Are you there now? They, could, they, they didn't have the ability to extract that dream. Even if the dream was extracted, they don't have the ability to interpret the metaphors that will bring the meaning out of the dream. And then Daniel did not only extract the dream from source. Daniel also interpreted the dream and provided counsel. Are you there? You are not, you are not following me. You are not following me here. Now that is proof that the other spirits of error have limitations in terms of what they can pick. The Bible says that we have received not a spirit that is of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. So there are things that are given to us of God, and the only way that we can know them is through the agency of that personality called the Holy Spirit. Now, so when you view the spirit realm from the perspective of his vista, what you will find will be different from what you view if you view from the perspective, the opening, the entrance, the portal that is secured by spirit of error. And you see, there are symptoms 
that prove that your outlet into the spirit realm is an outlet of error. Meanwhile, I, I need you to understand this. God said, uh, this is God's position. If someone in the camp, that in the Old Testament, all right, has begun to tap into the frequency of a foul spirit, what they do those days is that they stone the person to death. Because that guy is going to be a menace. He's going to spread spiritual knowledge that is an abomination. And on the strength of that knowledge, God himself will need to come and judge an entire nation. Be, it, 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 are, you, are you with me? So, that's how terrible access to spiritual knowledge coming from a wrong source is. It can malign an entire generation. So what you play with when you submit to the voice of a spirit of error operating in the life of a man is something that is so destructive that God himself recommends that this guy should be extinct, should be cut off, so that a plague does not rise on his account. That's how delicately and that's how decisively we are supposed to deal with issues of false spirits bearing witness in our midst. So that we develop a closed house. A house that is close to every other thing that is not the Holy Spirit. So that the voice of the Spirit of God can be loud in our midst. That is the endeavor that each and every one of us must labor to sustain. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Alright, so one of the aspects of divination, we just spoke about it now, is astrology. And in astrology... We use a spirit of divination to foretell the future, to explain things in the natural, to manipulate events by reason of an analysis of the alignment of the sun, moon, and star. The various manifestations of um, of astrology. One of the most user-friendly manifestations of astrology is the, uh, the signs of the zodiac. Uh, you know, it's still very prominent in the United Kingdom. Everybody's buying a newspaper not because they want to catch up with news. It's because the, um, the astrologers just came up with a new insight and it is enshrined in the dailies so they need to access the dailies and find what is the fate of them that are Sagittarius, what is the fate of them that are Leo. I've forgotten the rest. I still remember Sagittarius, I remember Leo. Capricorn. <laughs> so all of that. It's a user-friendly access to divination. Knowledge that is coming from an erroneous source. And that knowledge can make shipwreck of your soul. It's so dangerous. You don't know. You don't know. The moment you open your soul and you begin to drink into a false witness coming from spirits, there is not, it is more addictive than cigarette. Once you start it, you can't stop it. Except the Lord delivers you. You, the appetite of going to check. Have you heard people, we need to check up. <laughs> it's more addictive than cigarette. And so, there is a stern warning that you should not expose yourself to it. A stern warning. I should not expose. So, so uh, what, what is going on right now is that witchcraft, divination, and all of that, all of those resources are made available to us on a very user-friendly note. But one thing you must understand is that you are drinking from the fountain of a spirit of error. And that reality has the capacity to damage your soul and to inflict you with an appetite for more in an addictive manner. The guys today that are champion men for spirits of error into spiritism, they were honest people that were in challenges. Okay? And they just said, well, uh, yes, sir. 
please help me preach to your neighbor. The moment you receive help from Satan, you must serve Satan. They have preach. Let me preach. You must serve him. If you have, if you re, that's why those of you that are here tonight, and those of you that are listening to me online, and you, by any means, there was once upon a time you were sick when you were 11 years old, and they took you to a place. There is this man that walks with, with hide from snakes, and he used it to cure you. Before we end this meeting today, we need to help you by delivering you from that serpentine thing. Because the thing will follow you all through your life. And, mm, may the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. All right, so we have astrology. That's one aspect of divination. That's one aspect of divination. Uh, we have uh, horoscopy. Horoscopy is um, similar to astrology. But in horoscopy, are you there with me? Are you following what I'm talking about? In horoscopy, it is only the stars that we check. So those guys in the book of Matthew chapter 2 that were coming to check for Jesus because they had seen his star are actually into horoscopy. Horoscopy is an aspect of astrology. So we have ast astrology, we have horoscopy, which is an aspect of astrology. We have an aspect of divination called palm reading. Palm reading. When, when someone is possessed with a spirit of divination and he wants to divine, he wants to give you soothsayings, he takes a hold of your palm and begins to interpret your palm according to the analysis that is coming from the spirit of divination. And a lot of people that have introduce themselves as prophets, when you go for personal counseling to them, they take your palm and they begin to read. What the person is doing is that the person is already bringing you messages from a spirit of divination because palm reading is one of the aspects of, of, of divination. Are you still with me? Yes, this one is not so popular in Africa anymore. Crystal gazing, where people have a crystal ball. And when you come, they will check the crystal, ask you when you were born, ask you when the, your closest relative died. They use that as a, a parameter to feed in the data to the crystal ball, and they can tell you how your journey will be. And some of them boast that they can tell you how long you will live. The moment you want to get the information of how long you will live from that medium, what you have done is that you have allowed Satan to hack into your lifespan. Somebody needs to say, God forbid, God forbid. I was in my office one day and one, one guy just shows up. The guy said that he's the spirit of his grandfather has appeared to him and uh, that he has access to my details right now and the first one he wants to drop is how long I will live. I nearly cursed him. Even though he was, in, he was hallucinating, when I spoke about it, he cursed. He came to his senses and he checked out. He checked out of the place. Hallelujah. <laughs> he won. What? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. If you are here before and someone read your palm, raise your hand up. Raise it well, high. So what happened to you is that you are guilty and we need to remove that. We need, yeah, there's a point of contact. When you come into, you may not know, but when you come into intense warfare where something about your life is being contended for and you are fighting in prayer, in tongues in the night, ah, you can come under intense attack. Sickness that cannot be diagnosed in the hospital. And when you try to find out, hey, what happened to me? I was, I was worried. No, there's some, Satan has access of your archives. Anytime you peeped through the eyes of wizards, or you had access through the mutterings of witches, or, or you had insight that came from familiar spirits, it is documented in the archives of the devil. And it will be used against you in the day of battle. 
So tonight we are going to be real people. And we are going to own up so that we, there's a purging. There's a purging. God has commissioned a purging. And I was telling the prophet that there is it's a season of purging. Because the whole house of God, the whole house of God must be restored. And any open door whatsoever that hangs over your destiny, the Lord wants to undo it so that we become houses that the Holy Spirit can possess in order to accomplish his task upon the face of the earth. I mean waterproof houses where no other access can be gained from any other foul spirit. It is only the Holy Spirit that can manifest freely in our vessel. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are going to conduct purging this night. Yeah, great purging, great purging. And now that you know, maybe when you went for the consultation, you did not know the implication. But now that you know, you'll be held responsible if you are found, your feet is found again in the quarters of that Ezemo that gave you. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right, so if you went to the University of Ibadan, because I got this, I had to do, conduct all of this in the library in the University of Ibadan, and I, I did some research in some of the libraries, you will find a board, a strange kind of board. It's not for Scrabble. It's not for checkers. It's called an Uji board. It's a game that you play with a spirit. Yeah. And with a candle. And then the spirit will begin to reveal to you through the alphabet A, B, C. The spirit can spell. So when the spirit spells, you write it down. And then the spirit can tell you stories. Stories of the unknown. Stories of how your grandfather was. Who he married. How he died. The things that attacked him. And... It is a very addictive game, and you play it with a spirit. It is actually a spirit of divination resurrected in form of a game. And in most of our first-generation universities, you are likely to find an Uji board in the library. I don't want to press for that. I don't want to press. It's online. It's everywhere. And what is happening now, I found it more intense in the UK, where every young man has an access to the gateway of divination. In fact, oh my God, oh my God, I don't want to go into all those deep stuff. Uh, but you see, I, I want to preach in a church, a humble church, a small church. And the pastor felt, because of the things that happened, we were dealing with the deliverance issues in the heart of London. And they don't know that. But when I told him that, ah, I'm seeing a spirit that comes from a water, they said, there's not, nothing here. I said, oh, hold on, you hold on. Yeah, you hold on, that's my, that's my area. I have authority in that area to talk to spirits. Mm. So I told the pastor, there are spirits from the water here. He said, no, this is London, the heart of law. I said, no problem. When the manifestation started, the place erupted with great authority and People that were not supposed to manifest were manifest. You know, so we are in trouble. Can you give us some time? We are going to ask the school next door to open up so that you can counsel with people. And I accepted. And they brought me to the library of his school. And if I understand correctly, it was a primary school. And I sat down. And I looked this way and checked all the books on the library in the, on the stand. And they were all witchcraft books. Then I checked all the items on display. I saw the wizard cap. Th those ones I used to see in cartoons, I saw them lying. At the end of the day, I saw that I was in a shrine. They called it a library. But it was a shrine. And part of, you are laughing, you are laughing. Part of what is happening is that there's a revival of witchcraft. Witchcraft education, witchcraft documentaries, books that were written in the 15th century, how they accessed some demonic portals and began to speak to foreign spirits, even the spirits that have been tied in Tartarus, they could crack into their mind and find wisdom. So there's a revival of it. If my, if my information is correct, witchcraft now is a course that is studied in the university. And you think, hmm, 
Everything is reviving. Witchcraft is reviving. Islam reviving. And we are just here looking for money. Dressing nice. I say, hey, I just came from France. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The real people that serve Satan don't need to go to France. When you come from France, you come and see them. They will bring sickness on your father, on your mother. Someone will run mad. You will come from after France. You will come to him because he did it. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. We are looking for, we are looking for relevance. A man that knows the Holy Ghost does not look for relevance. Does We are trying to count. We are trying to be in Forbes. We are trying to... We are looking for what is not lost. Because we don't know our God. The people that do know their God, the Bible says, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. So once again, aspects of divination is in this wise. We have astrology, horoscopy, palm reading, crystal gazing, and the use of the Uji board. Now I'm going to stop because we need to pray. I need to talk about alchemy. There's something called alchemy. Ah. It seems you are also educated in your own way. Ah. Oh, okay, since you know that, I'm going to jump. <laughs> ah. Many of you are not aware of how concentrated the movies we watch are in these dimensions. There's been an outburst. The supernatural now is in broad daylight, it's in movies, it's in schools, it's in society, it's in what we call the norm. And if you are going to be correct societally, you need to accept measures of new age realities. These are forced indoctrinations that are put out there to ensure that you begin to submit to the mind-bending efforts that Satan has been sponsoring for some time now. You'll be doing yourself a great disservice if you don't know the Holy Ghost. Remember the scripture. The people that do know they are God. Hallelujah. You may not have realized, but it is, the warfare is in the realm of the supernatural. It is supernatural against supernatural now. And there are many sicknesses represented here and online that are not medical in nature. I've received so many medical reports from renowned labs all over the world about people that are obviously afflicted, but the laboratory could not see anything. I receive it weak after we life is becoming more supernatural <laughs> all right so when jesus said that we we need to pray always it looks like a cliche to you if you don't find your horn in the supernatural you're going to be a victim of someone else's manipulation as as illiterate as those people in the village are you will discover that spirituality is not it's not necessarily something that is intellectual. Yeah. You will find out very soon that the knowledge a person has with which he is afflicting you that attended London Business School, and that knowledge that the person has is not really the strength of intellectualism. It's spiritual knowledge. It was revealed by a spirit guide and because that knowledge is more excellent than the knowledge you got from Harvard with your knowledge from Harvard you'll be a victim of that personnel except you access knowledge from the all excellent platform 
You know, Paul spoke about the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. It means that he bests every form of knowledge. And uh, uh, at least once in my, is it once? Not once. In my mission, I've come on into head-on collision with people that speak for Satan. And people that speak for Satan don't need cell phones. They don't attend schools like we do. They are in the woods. They are far away from civilization. If you build a road close to where they operate, they will go further into the wilderness. Those are the people I'm talking about. I've been able to... Yeah, I've had encounters, physical, not spiritual, in dreams. No, physical warfare with a human being that speaks for Satan. I've had that a few times. And I can tell you that the knowledge that comes from Christ is excellent. It's far more excellent than the engineering that you studied in University of Lagos. It's far more excellent than the physics that you studied. As much as we need um, 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 legal knowledge, because I bought a house and the tenants refused to leave. <laughs> they refused to leave, so I had to call my, my lawyer. And one of them, one of them was very vocal with broad chest. When we appeared in court, the vocal man lost he lost his all trans. It's obvious we need legal knowledge. But Paul spoke about the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. That this knowledge bests every other kind of knowledge that you can get. I'm not talking about knowledge that you can study, knowledge that you can learn, knowledge that you can be taught. I'm talking about knowledge that is handed out to you by the Holy Ghost himself through Christ Jesus. That's the knowledge I'm talking about. It is an excellent knowledge. It is, it is the best kind of knowledge for you to be equipped with. And that's the kind of knowledge that God is going to be using to make a difference between he that is in the service of God and he that is not in the service of God. I want to round up quickly. Since you know about alchemy, I'll jump. And we'll talk about necromancy. Necromancy. In necromancy, let me tell you the architecture behind necromancy. There is always a familiar spirit. And in necromancy, most of our cultures that believe that the dead members of our families are still members of our families. So they consult ancestors. What is it called in Yoruba? The, the ancestors. Pastor John, you are the only one that I will believe on, on this. You are a conk Yoruba man, so help me. The ancestors. What are they called? You are denying me now. You are not responding. Are you are saying, no, it's not. That's not the ancestors. So in every culture where the ancestors are consulted, what they are trying to preach to you, the doctrine they are trying to preach to you, is that the dead members of the family are still members of the family. So if we come to that crossroad where we don't know what to do, the first point of call is to consult the ancestors. Now, how that happens, are you there? Is through the instrumentality of a familiar spirit. So this familiar spirit comes to masquerade as a medium that stands between the living and the dead, bringing counsel from the dead to the living. Now, let me tell you something according to the scriptures. When a man dies, he, 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 the next time he will surface is judgment so that <laughs> that ancestor they are saying he's speaking to you know is a familiar spirit that is masquerading he can even use the voice of that person if you used to know the person while he was alive and those are lying wonders to get you to believe and to submit to their wisdom and to their authority I don't want to go into this story. It, it will, you will know who I'm talking about. So let me look for a way to coin it. As I stop. I'm stopping because we need to begin the purging, the cleansing, before the miracles. Give me volume there so that we can blot out that sound. So there's an education that God wants to bring to the body of Christ. It's an education of the ways of the Holy Ghost because, yes, this is, 
it's going to explode. This education will explode. The Lord will begin to equip people with grace and with utterance, with spiritual language, with wisdom to describe, to explain the realm of God, the realm of the Holy Spirit and how to tap into the possibilities therein so that the least among us will have adequate knowledge of the God that we serve and we will find the strength that is in the knowledge of our God and with that strength we can discomfit and best any other knowledge that comes through any other spirit of error. It will be like it was on Camel when God's man accessing the dynamics of the spirit in the realms of God through the Holy Ghost came to stand against the prophets of Baal. That's how it's going to be again. It will be clear that the Lord is God. Because the limitations attributed to these spirits of darkness will show themselves. The day genuine people that speak for Jesus are standing to proclaim his mind. So the least among us will manifest with the strength of David. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So we are going to start in a moment of, oh my God, there's oil. See, oil is already here. There's, there's oil. There's oil from God. There's oil from heaven. There is oil. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to start tonight. Oh, I didn't even go far enough in my teaching to tell you how uh, people that use the spirit of divination come masquerade in ministry. So no time. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll continue subsequently. But if we don't continue here, just watch our pages. You will see where it continues. I, I will show you all the marks. So a lot of people have been boasting that they are prophets. No, they are not. They are soothsayers. One of the things you need to know, are you with me? Yeah. Let me give you this one for free before we come to really deal with the matter. And we will not stop until we have dealt with this matter. This is an urgent matter. When you find someone flowing in the supernatural and the person doesn't seem to have scriptural content commensurate with the dimensions of the supernatural he commands, shut down, switch off, go. Because when God wants to raise a supernatural man, what he does first is that he reveals himself. God reveals himself to the man first before he uses the man to speak for him. When you find that a man lacks content, he doesn't, he, he can't speak, Jesus Christ, about the things of God, he's a novice. Can speak about the color of your clothes and the name of your ancestors. But he cannot speak about God. He doesn't know God. And no matter how he tries, there is no content. He, he never met God. There is only one spirit that can reveal God. And he doesn't know that spirit. So how can he testify of the things of God? How? And it's everywhere, on every poster, shouting. And ignorant people that have been bewitched are gathered around such altars. The days when such witchcraft worked, those days are over. Because the spirit of Elijah comes again. So that the ways of God can be known to everyone that walks the streets of Zion. The hand of God comes upon you mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. The manifestation must be commensurate to the content. The content. There's no content. Someone can hold a, 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 a discussion about God and stay on that discussion for 30 minutes. It goes like, it, it, as if, it, and then this one, this one also, this one, no, 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 no. You never met Jesus. You never met Jesus. Because Jesus will use your circumstances to reveal himself to you. He will use your challenges to reveal himself to you. He will use your struggles to reveal himself to you. He will use, ah, and when you start to talk about Jesus, it will be obvious that you have met him, that you have encountered him, that is factored into your life, factored into your destiny. Yes, there was a time you wept because of some loss 
and in the midst of your weeping you found a comforter his hands were so loving and you fell for him there will be outright evidence that you met with him there are so many that speak and say, no, I'm from this. I'm a senior prophet here. And there's no content. Just babblings. Can't open the Bible. Where did you meet God? In the shrine. No, it's a spirit of divination that is at work. So, but we are going to labor and bring out all the marks. So that you will not be stuck in the wrong place. If you are still here tonight, we want to advance a spiritual campaign. A spiritual campaign against everything that came through a spirit of error and just in case you are here and your palm was red and your destiny was spoken of through a crystal ball and you received some wisdom that came from a spirit of error tonight we want to labor to shut down the door that have been secured by the enemy somebody in this place needs to cry out to God right now Somebody needs to cry. The next few minutes are spiritual moments. At times of transitions. Times of migration. Times of migration. Yes, any such door that has been opened in my life. Maybe you hear the whispers of the sirens of Atlantic Ocean. You heard from the spirits that inhabit the forest. You heard from the diviners that interpret and analyze the palms of men. Tonight, tonight, you want to ask God, close the door, close the door. You are my God, the Lord alone. He is God. I have no other God besides you. I have no other God. I have no other God. Sekubamba sateli abrosketo bankada brakata la babo seketeli mahai skumba mahai kabala konda mahai sakonde belekete eskito prama kantelia eskito presko fila everyone that has encountered God everyone that has encountered God can speak about his encounter the things he got from his walk with God yes yes God is willing in this time to give you a first-hand encounter something that will abide with you forever Gomboro is a palato, Ica Panteria, Ica Sama Catababoria, Escompela, Escapelia, Acapata Masaya, Esocela, Abraca Tantele, A Sama Cala Babocola, Alaita Cabellamo Sante. My mama, mama, my. Eso samina, prai kapasado, prai la bakanama, iskombalaito, brekota mina kade, eka salabonde, abraka ye, abraka ye, abraka ye, asama ye, eseka ye, alanta babori bakadia, abraka tala. Esama Katelia, Abrai Kopala, Abakabala Tababori Abreski. Yala Baboko Santelia, Abramina Kadia, Abraka Sonda, Amanda Laboria, Esamina Kade, 
Ezamina kade, abranta bakuda bala, ingo balabasa ye, ingo skelia, abranta bosa manta baboria, abranta bakada baboko tala, alai kambelia kobese. Hey! Kovasia makula, aseko oma, alai kosate, lakabala, yaka kakamanda. Yaka sola bakadia, entoma kande, yada bose, yala bandelia, yala babokoda, yala balabakala, anka braka balata, ambra kala babolanto, ambra shanda babalaita, akabayata branda babolakala. Bala mama mama masi. Bala baboria siko bane, abai kompala. Araka basakatala, indobe samamola, samamola. Bala yeso, bala manai, bala manai, sanda bala hai, priska bakonde babakada, romenai sike, romenai sike, romenai labola, romenai kande. Romenai sababa, raka bonza amela ika alando dobo koro alanda de 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 alando sama akai la babara manakala. Yes, yes, yes. Alabo same nakadia rekotande. Eso sa makanda babora bala, abraka telia iko ba masando, alando bokoria, abres komba kabeza na ande, iya kake da boloke da bakala baboria. The Lord Himself is mobilizing His church. It is a journey of the supernatural. It's bringing education, bringing impartation, opening our capacity so that we can handle the invincible. We can hear the inordinable. We can be his mouthpiece, his vocal cord to bring his witness, to bring his reality. You are his messenger you are his weapon you will do exploits in his name for the people that do know dear god they shall be strong they shall do exploit ah ah seminakadabonga saila we give a praise. Yeah, Cabo Bosatalia, Yata Maboko Semina Cade, Brando, Sima Maye, Eco Babu, Eco Babu, Cado Selamandelia, Rascata Babande Cadola, Yato Boko Soko Mantalia. Presko ba manina kade bogori akateli. Yeah, mama. Yeah, mama. Can you cry out and say, Lord, every opening in my life, every opening in my family that Satan may wish to exploit, let it be closed right now. Let it be closed right now. I repent from consulting with any medium that is not the Holy Ghost. And I ask, let the door be shut. Let the door be shut. Let the door be shut. Let the door be 
shout in the name of Jesus Christ. I am your temple. I am your vessel. No other spirit has the right of way to operate around me, in me, and on me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We strive to know the ways of the Spirit. We strive to understand the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Can we ask that God will give us an advantage by His Spirit? Give us an advantage. We are willing to be instructed. We are willing to be helped. We are willing to be supported through the ministry of your Spirit. Put us in the advantage. Over and above, people that have access to the whispers that came from spirits of error, put us in the advantage. Those people we meet in the offices that are deeply rooted in the black arts, in magic, in, in astrology, in divination, let it be obvious that we serve the living God. Let my life be an example 
Let my life be a witness. Let my life be sufficient evidence to show that the God that I serve, He is the strongest. He is the wisest. He is the mightiest. Yes, yes, yes. My life will be an advertisement. My life will be an evidence. Yes, yes. Obaku senima kanteli. En so se la brasque to mena kadeli. Busca te bogoria haparatos kito brandeli. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Now, I need to tell you that the Lord is willing tonight. He's willing. Yeah, he's willing. So I'm going to give some commands. As I give the commands, things will open up. Just in case you have been trusting God as a young lady for marriage, things will open up. Just in case you have been trusting him for a child, things will open up. Just in case through witchcraft, through all kinds of weapons in the kingdom of darkness, your finances were drained. Oh my God. Get ready for restoration because things will open up. Things will open up. Things will open up. In the name of Jesus. Are, are there trends, patterns in your family? Patterns of reproach, patterns of limitations that you have been battling with. And when you pray for long, you begin to see spirits arrayed against you. Oh my God. Tonight you are not fighting alone. We fight with the strength of this entire congregation. We fight. Oh my God. Oh my God. The things that have overcome your personal prayer life, that will not overcome us tonight. Because we come in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ananamabosike babala. Messiah. We're going to do something quickly. If I say in the name of Jesus, you say amen. Hey. Oh my God. The Lord is here. In the name of Jesus. Now, part of the reason why I ask you to respond, amen, is that it gives me the opportunity to see into the realm of the Spirit. Now, listen, listen carefully, listen carefully. Someone here, your womb was locked through diabolical means. Your womb was locked through diabolical means. And in the next 17 seconds, it will be losing. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me. In the next 17 seconds. In the next 17 seconds, the hand of God will come upon you and that womb will be loose. Yes, I know you said amen. You don't even need to say amen because the Holy Spirit is already searching for that sister. He's already searching for that sister. Okay, you are seeing it now. Your womb is loose in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, another one there. Your womb is loose in the name of Jesus. Your womb is loose in the name of Jesus. Hey. Korea. Siamon Deli Kababosa. 
Maturia Bakama Laita. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is suffering. Someone is suffering here. Somebody is suffering here. You have been under the torment of a foul spirit for 12 years. For 12 years. Oh my God. The image of this spirit sometimes appears in your room and you have been haunted by this spirit for 12 years. I. 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 You've been haunted for 12 years. And the hand of God will come upon you so that the yoke that you carry will be destroyed in the next 17 seconds. He's searching in the congregation. This spirit has been troubling your life. I see it. I see it. His hand is coming. His hand is coming. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it's arrested already. It's arrested already. It's arrested already. Now I punish that foul spirit of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey! Kalia soka bando kobo koseli. Res kufi lama kadabogo santeli. Yema moseka dia la babokonda. There's somebody in this congregation. Three members of your household died in rapid succession. Three members of your household died in rapid succession. And you came here for this meeting. And I see the spirit of death hovering to take the fourth one. Now you are here. Three burials were conducted in rapid succession. Where are you? You attended two of the three barriers. You attended two of the three barriers. Where are you? Hey! See a level of Bobby Mahana. I love me, me, so come on. Hey! See a combe manake. You attended two out of the three barriers. But tonight the Lord wants to break the yoke. He wants to break the yoke. Somebody stretch your hand in their direction and begin to pray. This ancient covenant battling with the destinies of these people must be broken tonight. Sakobe mama masayata. Ela nana mo ba na ya. E ba mana kane mo senani ya ba ko bali. E mama na kane mo. Ayane no mara kanda ba bor. Amaeda is an alaborna, I am a borella. So mina la eco, mamma la eda. So me, mamma, yes, or Santa Gaye. Who me, mana eco, Santa la boma. Hey! Oh, Glory.
it, O God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen. I see a tongue speaking. A tongue. So what I'm going to do is that I will rebuke this tongue. And when I rebuke the tongue, there will be a physical sign. The physical sign will be that the anointing will affect two people. When I rebuke that tongue. If we see that sign, it means that everyone here is delivered. If we don't see that sign, then we need to weep and labor. We need to weep and labor because the errand of the spirit of death has not yet been undone. In the name of Jesus. Those of you in front, stop praying. Just don't pray again. You've tried. Keep quiet now. Father, tonight we stand in the corporate faith generated through all the hearts aligned to you in this congregation. And those that are participating online. And we raise the issue of the spirit of death that has been hovering on these families here represented and in families that are online that we cannot see physically. This errand of the spirit of death has taken lives, claimed destinies, cut men down that has been propelled by this tongue speaking evil things tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I arrest this tongue and I stop it in Jesus' mighty name. I take authority over your power and I say cease in Jesus' name. So if it is true that what I sent into the realm of the spirit I shot this tongue, there will be a sign. In the next 17 seconds, the anointing will come upon two of them. In the next 17 seconds, in the next 17 seconds, in the next 17 seconds, it will build so strong, so intense, it will fall on them. Two of them, there will be a sign from heaven. Lord, if you have heard us tonight, let there be a sign. Let the anointing come upon two of these individuals. Let it come strong. 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 Hey. Hey. Every transaction, every covenant, agreement that has brought the presence of devils, wicked spirits seeking to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I overpower you. I discomfit you. I cut you off in the name of Jesus. The power of that tongue has been defeated tonight. Now I speak over your life the blessings of the Lord. That the hand of God might come upon you. And empower you. And take you beyond your limitation. And cause you to mount up with wings like the eagles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Listen. 
before I give a command about sickness. Someone has been going around in circles and it is the pattern in your family. I just saw the secret. And if I speak by the mouth of God, he will provide evidence to confirm the things whereof I speak. Hey. So listen to me. I see on a grave, on one of the graves, that grave has become a platform of divination where evil spirits are sent, dispatched to haunt members of your family irrespective of where they are domiciled in this world. It is as though a grave has become an altar. An altar for transaction. An altar for consultation. Those of you outside can go. You are free. You are free. We have defeated that debt. In fact, we send the debt back to the priest that has been summoning it. We send it back to his household in the name of Jesus. Tonight, we are going to defeat the will of that spirit that has brought reproach around every member of that family and has brought spiritual injury. Oh! Oh! Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we undo as a congregation, taking advantage of this corporate environment of anointing, this corporate atmosphere of faith. We defeat the power of necromancy Amen. that has been used to bring injury to the life of one of us that is present here tonight. The power of necromancy and the attendant reproach that comes out of that priesthood. I say we defeat you. 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 We defeat that mystery. We defeat that mystery tonight. And the spirit and the priesthood of necromancy. We defeat his wisdom. We defeat his wisdom. We turn the hand of God against that priesthood. And we destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a certain bondage here that will only answer to hallelujah seven times. So we can start. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Lord, we have done as you have commanded. So we ask that you stretch forth your hand. Oh, let there be physical evidence that the yoke has broken. So in the next 17 seconds, let us give the Lord the opportunity to search in our midst. 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 The yoke is breaking. He's searching. 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 Holy God!
Oh yes. It breaks tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is upon you to set you at liberty. Oh my God, you will be called by a new name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's liberty, there's liberty, there's liberty. He says you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord himself shall name. Oh, Sanana, 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 oh, As a sign that the Lord has come as Jehovah Sabaoth, the man of war, he will heal two eyes as a sign. He will heal two eyes. So Lord, do your wonders. Show us a sign that you have come with us in this battle. In this battle that we will rage from place to place. Taking all the ground that has been conceded to the enemy. If you have come to war with your people, to stand with your people if you have come to fight with us show us a sign let two people here with problems in their sight receive healing so I rebuke blinding spirits and I command you take off your hands in the name of Jesus Remove those glasses and test your eyes. Remove the glasses and test your eyes. Remove the glasses and test the eyes. Hey. Aye la 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 bo mo sando mama. Aye la 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 bo mo sando me. Before I begin to pray for the sick, I need to see that sign. If you know that there's been a change in your sight where you are, because I asked him for a sign. Show me. There's been a change in your sight. Yes, we have one. I'm looking for another one. There's been a change in your sight. There's been a change in your sight. Yeah, bro, come, come. Before we start praying for the sick. This sign, bro, come. This sign is to confirm. Oh, the second one. There's a change in your sight. Let me see. You conduct. I said remove your glasses. And conduct a check. If nothing happens, don't say anything. I'm just looking for a sign. If something happens, don't keep quiet. I asked him for a sign of two eyes being healed as a sign that he will follow us into this battle. Oh, the second sign is here. All right, so who is helping me? Oh, is the Lord not faithful? Wait. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor John, where are you? Okay, oh, Victor. 
Confirm it before we start. Woo! You know what I'm seeing here? I'm seeing someone you are listening to us. It's a woman. It's a, it's a woman, a bit elderly. And she's been watching us from lying on the bed because she's been sick. What I'm seeing is that this woman is walking now. So uh, those of you on the, online, checking the decks online, please, uh, oh woman, anywhere you are, go back, go back and type that I am the one you are talking about and put your name. Oh, the Lord is, the healing is second place. Okay, wait, wait, let's, uh, let's extract Jesus Christ. You see, I can't contain that oil. I can't. Jesus. Ah, okay. Let's let's try. Yeah, what happened to this, my brother? Yeah. It's hard astigmatism. Astigmatism. Uh, can, can, can I see your glasses? These two miracles is a sign that God said he will fight with us. I like, I like when God is ready to fight. I like it. Astigmatism, how long have you been using things like this? Ten years. Ten years. They've been using this for ten years. So what happened to you? Wait, 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 wait. That, that song. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. We need to use it. Uh-huh. Oh! drink that wine. There's wine there. <laughs> when you take a little of it, oh my God. Ah, now I know what the Bible means when it says you don't need alcohol. Ah, I don't know who can be higher than where I am. <laughs> In fact, there's a dance step that I just dance. I've never... <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's hear from him before so, Satan has failed. Yes? So what happened? What happened to you? I suffered from astigmatism for about 10 years. I, um, when you prayed, before you said remove the glasses, I immediately, I received by faith, I removed my glasses, and then I started to stare directly into the light because otherwise I had to squint. But I, I can see clearly now in the bright light. <laughs> Come, let me bless you. Come, come, come. You are, you are a sign, two of you are a sign that God will fight with us. He will fight. Come up, come. Father, thank you for this miracle. Let it be permanent in the name of Jesus. Yes. Where is Victor? Uh, Victor has... Oh, okay. Yeah. You also came for, I didn't call you for, for blessing, but you, you joined us. Okay. Yeah. Go on. It's also similar to what he said. That's similar to him. Like for how, how many years it's have you so been in? 2009. 2009. That's how many years? That's about 14 years. Now. 14 years. Yes, sir. And how long have you been using things like this? About 14 years now. 14 years? Yes, sir. You need to. Yeah, wait. So what happened? Did you feel anything before you noticed there was? Normally, I can't look directly into the light. And it's always blurry. It's when blurry. It's around light. But by faith, I removed it, and it was clear. I didn't have to squint again. 
It is permanent in the name of Jesus. All right. Now, I want to pray for the sick now. If you have a sick person that is somewhere else that is not in this location, you can switch on your phone, call the person, leave the phone running while I pray. Leave the phone running. Quickly. Quickly as you can. Quickly. Quickly. Well, we're already out of time. Already out of time. Those of you listening online, you are part of what is going on here. And God wants to release grace right now. Grace. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise tonight. We give you glory. And this moment, I arrest every spirit of infirmity, every sickness, every disease, every curse, every spirit of reproach that is battling with the destinies of your people. Today, I stand in the office of the calling and I take full advantage of your mercies and of your grace. And I rebuke sickness, I rebuke disease, I rebuke every charm, I rebuke every spell. I rebuke every spirit that is assigned to bring injury and I break that yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. I say blinding spirits be bound. Deafening spirits be bound. Oh, I come against growths, tumors, cancers, fibroids. Dry up in the name of Jesus. Dry up in the name of Jesus. Dry up in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every spirit of reproach, every pain, every affliction. Every syndrome that is not of God that your people have been subjected to. I rebuke it and I break that yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. I release grace through the cell phone. I release grace online in the name of Jesus. Let everyone that is bound be loose in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, we give you praise. Now, healing is flowing now, and it will continue even after, when, uh, even after we share the grace. Now, there is a young lady before I run away, because I know it's, my time is up, I'm running. Okay. There's a young lady somewhere in the congregation. And there's an empowerment that the Lord is bringing to you. Oh, my God. You paid a great price to come here. So I want to say to you, go in this thy might in the name of Jesus Christ. Ooh. No time to take testimonies now. Go in this thy might in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen, you need to help me right now because the weight of the glory, if I go home like this, I will not be able to sleep. There will be a problem. Because the anointing takes time to wear away. But if you receive it, then I will be free. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, anyone here whose heart is open, let that one begin to drink from this oil. Begin. All right. Now, if you stop saying amen, you can receive more. Stop saying amen. No amen again. Okay, Lord, let it flow into them. Let it flow. 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 Oh my God, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow in the name of Jesus.